Okay, I'm in. Lab Code Agents, we've got Michael Mayer, and again, random acts, acts of coaching, nothing yeah. random about it. That's right. Except that it's super consistent, and that's not random. So, <laughs> that is not random. Let's get going, Michael. Thanks for being with us again. I appreciate it. My 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 uh, my pleasure. I'm going to share my screen real quick. We'll just talk our way through this and awesome. and make it powerful. And today we're we're uh, we're really talking about uh, events, right? And yep. and how to really uh, make sure that we focus on uh, appreciation, right? And uh, I, I I love the one with Michael Hellickson, and I love how he what he shared during that because I think it gives people a pretty good baseline. Uh, for what we're going to talk about today. I feel that like today is, is a master's degree in event-based business. Today is, wow. is like, all right, so we want to have an event. Now, how do we get referrals from it? How, yes. do, we make it, how do we make it the best, right? So uh, that's what I want to cover today. All, all this earlier stuff that I just skipped through is basically, you know, it's not so random acts of kindness. All of these trainers that we, we've had and teachers uh, are doing a lot of work in their presentations. And I believe that random is referrals are normally dominant over marketing, right? And they are, right? If somebody's referred, they're more likely to choose you than if they just see somebody's marketing. Um, and here's the thing, right? Is uh, So we've got two big events coming up next week with Certified Referral Trainer and then the Referral Mastery Summit. People can check out referco.com or referralmasterysummit.com to, to check that out. Um, and then we got Get Accelerate coming, which is our 30-day online course on getting started with your database. Um, and then, you know, August is San Antonio and then Disney. Awesome. Disney. All right. So, yeah, we're doing Gen Gen Disney, right? Just yeah. outside of Orlando. And uh, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a rocking event. I was talking earlier that Chris Smith is doing the Facebook advertising and the Internet lead conversion part. He wrote the book on that, The Conversion Code. And mm -hmm. I personally think I wrote the book on referrals.com uh, mm -hmm. with 7L. And so I'm doing referrals and networking. He's doing Facebook advertising and internet. So rain, right? We're teaching people how to rain make and make it rain. And we're bringing the rain to, to Orlando in September. So exciting, exciting deal. Which, nice. which, which leads to what's interesting is, is, you know, what's interesting is, is Buffini runs the 7L system. Hellickson runs the 7L system. Most successful coaching and training companies run the 7L system. And, and that's what I want to talk about today is, is okay, the 7L system is in, it's an events-based system, right? So, so the, 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 if you want to call it the lifeblood or the, the blood, that, the, the strong, the, the spine of 7L system is events, but some people will say, well, the 7L system, it's just about events, right? Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's the furthest thing from the truth, but the, the events is a core of what we do. And, and so I always, I always start our catalyst coaching calls and I always start presentations with, Hey, I have a quick question for you, right? It's what are you calling your database about today? Right? So what are you calling your database about today? And that, so Tristan, what's an example? Like, what, what have you called or what could you call your database about today? Um, you know what? We're having an event in, for, for Halloween. And so that's all because I keep on talking to you. And <laughs> saying, no joke, man. This is like, well, I keep yeah. on talking to Michael and he says, keep, you know, have events, do this. And now, yeah. so I'm looking forward to this thing. Yeah. And that's what we're going to call our people about our, our yeah. first event. I love it. I love it. And uh, so awesome. And that, that's, that's a great thing, right? Is, yeah. And we're going to talk about that, right? Yep. Is, is so what are people calling about? And, and the thing is, is why do people not want to pick up the phone? Well, they don't have a reason to call. And, and so, you know, it, it's all about, okay, what's the reason for your call to your database? And what we need to do is sometimes we need to create really good reasons to call your database that is not pushy. It's not salesy. It, it's not, uh, I'm in the business, and it's sure in the heck not uh, asking for referrals, right? Very so, true. So, hi, Kevin. Welcome to the show, brother. Appreciate hey, it. Hello, Michael. Good. So, uh, Kevin, you really haven't missed much at all, right? I just did some announcements, things like that. But what we're talking about today is how the 7L system is really 
how to run an event-based business. And if we think about like our business is we need to have, uh, we need to have these events that um, gets us the chance to, to meet people and interact with people because it's the highest leverageable activity that we have. A one-on-one, -on -one, uh, for those of you that have read 7L, you know one-on-ones are the top of the pyramid, but, but they take a lot of time. They take a lot of energy. They take a lot of effort and they take some resources, right? So, yeah. it, so it's one of those where, okay, that's the best way to have a connection. But events are like having 10, 20, 100 one-on-ones in a shorter period. And there's also some other advantages that is that they're, they're leverageable to coordinate. And they're also uh, leverageable as, as far as your time, right? You, you get five mm -hmm. minutes with each. It's, it's, it, the energy uh, of an event is sometimes even more powerful than the energy of a one-on-one, -on -one, right? So Makes there's sense. a lot of advantages to having events, right? Yeah. So, so, all right. So we need to have events as part of our business. Every, every agent should. So we have these, what we call proactive events. These are uh, appreciation events for our database. Now I'm going to define uh, two of the things that we're going to talk about today so that we're all on the same page. So right. we need, we need proactive events. Proactive are, are um, we are going to schedule them out. We have a lot of control over them. So top yaps are uh, our yearly ambassador program, right? Yeah, yearly ambassador program for the top people in our database, right? We have two segments within okay. our database that we have to cater to. We need to cater to the top people, like top 150, top 100, top 50, top 33, whatever you want to call it. But we need to have something that's catered to that group. They need to be private. They need to be intimate. They need to be smaller. Uh, they need to not be advertised on, on Facebook, right? They, they, they need to be like, have this, this exclusivity feeling, right? There's four things that people want in life, right? It's recognition, it's exclusivity, it's contribution, and it's community, right? So, so please notice the power of events. You have the ability to recognize you have the ability to exclusive, right? Make it exclusive to certain groups or make something within the event exclusive. Contribution, we're going to talk about quite a bit during this is how to, how to help people contribute. They want to contribute. They want to contribute to you, but they also want to contribute to the world. And then community, the sense of community. Well, there's no better sense of community uh, than them being at an event with a bunch of other like-minded people, right? So, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. Do you want to, you want to finish what you're saying? Cause I, oh, as you're talking, I'm just jotting down questions. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me do that. Let me get through this slide and then, and then you're going to probably have some will be answered, but, but ask away. Right. I want it to be like that. So, um, you know, so the first thing is, so this top yearly ambassador program, we call them top yap events are smaller and they're for your top people. Then we have the all yaps. And the all yaps, that's all yearly appreciation plan, right? Yeah, some people have a business plan. We have yeah. a yearly appreciation plan, right? So yearly appreciation plan, this is for all of your database, including non-local agents. And Tristan, listen to this, including internet leads. You are going to invite internet leads to your all yap events. You are going to invite everyone you know except for local realtors, right? If you're a lender, you're going to invite everybody except for local lenders. So the bottom line is if they're in direct competition with you, you're not going to invite them. But if they're not direct, you're going to invite everyone. So people all the time is like, well, what about non-local people who have moved from my city? Like, let's say they moved from Atlanta to Orlando. Do you invite the person from Orlando? A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. I, we learned that from you last time, dude. Yeah. That yeah. Was like it's, yeah. But it's such a surprise to people. They're like, oh my gosh, I, why am I invited? They're not going to come. And the thing is, is like, oh, you don't know that, right? You don't know if they're going to attend or not. We've had people from our, you know, we've had people from Arizona who happen to be in town come to our, uh, come to our uh, pie day, right? We've mm -hmm. had people who were in town from Montana go to our ice cream, right? Our pool day, ice cream day, back to school day, mm -hmm. right? So, so, you know, you just never know, right? You just never know. 
True. So, so you've True. got two, two types of events. You've got top yaps for your top people. You've got all yaps for everyone. This is the one you put on Facebook. This is the one that you spread the word on and let a lot of people know about. All right. I'm going to skip that one because it's just an optional and I want to just stick with what you really need to do. Now, success-based events, right? You get a seller, you do an open house. Everybody should be doing open houses. Everybody. Even second home communities uh, in today's world, you need to be doing open houses. You need to be doing agent opens, right? And you're like, am I just feeding hungry agents? You know what? Invite the neighbors. Invite people you know. Invite everybody to your broker open, right? And then, you know, this is what I became famous for, right? Right out of the shoot, I got 11 referrals from my very first client. And my very first client was a buyer. We threw a housewarming party for Davey and Vanessa Davis. I got 11 referrals at my very first housewarming party. So when you have a buyer, oh. you, you need to throw a housewarming party, right? Okay. And then you've got your marketing events, which are educational based, right? Yeah. So, so that is the event based business. This is what we teach to. This is what we coach to is, is basically everything's an event, which leads to you will never use the word flyer or brochure ever again, right? You're, you're going to throw those out of your vernacular, right? The marketing yeah. words are gone. And what oh. you're going to replace flyer and brochure with is invitation. 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 Everything you, that is on paper is an invitation to an event. Tristan. A question here. Yeah. Can we add the word sexy to the invitation? <laughs> Yeah. And, and you know what? In some cases, it's just de facto, right? <laughs> they think invitation from Tristan, they throw away invitation from Tristan and just think sexy. <laughs> right? So, so it's like, you know, I mean, that, that's even what, right? You don't want to say invitation from sexy Tristan. That's like that's being so. redundant, right? That's like, you know, the governmental <laughs> office of redundancy rep and repetition. You have the right? automatic sexy factor, Tristan. Just Goes without saying, buddy. All right. So here's the bottom line that we always say is you want more referrals, have more events, right? Have more events, right? Yeah. Have more events. More referrals will be given this year than any year in history. And we need to capitalize on that trend, right? And that's, that's where, you know, hey, listen, are you telling people you appreciate them? Or more importantly, are you showing them? And if you have a yearly appreciation plan, then you are showing them rather than just telling them. And uh, so let's stop right here and just kind of, Kevin, go ahead and ask your questions. And, and Tristan, you're having an event, dude. I would take advantage of this 30 minutes, right? Dude, I mean, like, like peg this fault, brain man. for your event. It is all your fault. So, so I'll take it. Listen, uh, I'll take it. And I will take a 25% referral fee on all the referrals you generate because of what I'm about to share with you. How's that sound? First of all, I hope you share what you shared with us last time, what you taught us last time about Which was how to amazing. leverage events, because that was the very best thing I've ever heard with regards to leveraging an event and how to get with the top influencers at the event. And I hope we're talking about that. Are we going to talk about that today? So, so here's the thing, Kevin, I'm so glad you brought that up because, because this is a part of that system, which is the visit, meet, host, right? So, so Remember, so you're listening yeah. to this? and you have somewhere to go, don't go. Because what he's about to share is like the best like event strategy ever. So- Well, thank you. Okay, and I want to ask you a couple- And I 100% agree with you, Kevin. I just want you to know that right out of the back. So, so <laughs> that, that might've been one of the most brilliant things I've heard in a long, long time. <laughs> So Kevin's thank you for sharing. But it takes a smart guy to recognize it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like that, that. So, so, all right. So we did the seven steps to connecting with connectors, which is how do we, how do we pick the top of a, a networking a, of a stranger core, right? You have a hundred strangers. How do you figure out who the four or five best are? Well, you let somebody within the group choose those for you. You meet the four or five, you meet the four or five um, on, at one-on-ones and then you invite them to an event you are hosting. Please notice that you're going into another village. You are, you are interviewing them at your one-on-one -on -one to see if they fit into your village. And then you're inviting them to your village and your community. And that's where the referrals will occur, right? And this can all happen in a Got week, it. right? It can happen that. So what I'm talking about today is host. Like you need to host an event um, to, to take your referrals through, through, through the next point. So great point there. Kevin, go ahead, yeah. 
Uh, so one thing I want to say on that real quick is more of a statement is like a lot of us have maybe never done an event and yeah. a lot of us sometimes feel intimidated by yeah. like hosting an event. What does that mean? Yeah. What do I have? I have to go up there in front of all these people and talk and I'm not comfortable. Okay. No. Well, let, Tristan talks about this all the time. Leverage. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel if I'm not comfortable being the, like at the forefront of the event, I can leverage my vendors. I can leverage my lender. I can leverage my escrow person. I can leverage, you know, whoever to get up there and like lead it, but I can still be the host. I can maybe, you know, be in the background, but my name is where, you know, where it needs to be. And I'm the one intermingling with people. But like, do you agree with that? Like if I don't feel completely 100% comfortable going up there in front of everyone, could I use my vendors and like people, other people to kind of do most of the work, but I get the credit. Yeah. You know, I can leverage my vendors. I can leverage my lender. I can leverage my escrow person. Uh oh, what was that? The, that the was credit, weird. The credit is in the coordination, right? So the, I mean, the, the the power is in the coordination. You're the one that's coordinating and hosting and 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 you know getting people. You're the you're the ringleader, so to speak. But being the ringleader doesn't mean being in the center of the stage, right? So I'm an introvert. People, you know, on the introvert to extrovert scale. Uh, everybody's an ambivert, but I really side towards the introvert side of things. And so it's one of those are like, but, but I teach an event based business. Why do I do that? Well, because it works. Right. But the other thing too, is sometimes the hardest thing for you to do is the easiest thing for someone else to do. Right. Right. So, so you're going to have no problem finding someone to MC or someone to speak at your event. And what if I told you that if it was someone else, it might actually work in your favor. Because when Tristan is the MC for my event and he's bragging on me, Tristan's tribe is listening loud and clear. And you know, Tristan is, is I'm, I'm using some of his influence until I have my own influence. So the thing is, is sometimes having, I mean, one thing you might have somebody that's really good within your database, who's a professional speaker, who is um, really good, really motivational, really inspirational. I would say, don't be, don't be, even if you love to be on stage, have that person, have that person be the person who does the announcements and does the housekeeping and does the introduction, right? You go up and literally you, you look at some of the most famous speeches ever, you know, the emancipation Procl proclamation was less than two. The Gettysburg address was less than three minutes, right? So it's like, go up and just, and just say, thank you. The reason we can do these events is because of your referrals and people like you. We love doing these events because we love people like you. And listen, we're not chasing business. We're not spending money and time on internet leads and chasing. We can, we can just work with you. We're hundred percent dedicated to you and your referral. So that's why we can do events like these. Yeah. And so thank you. And that's it. And then you step off stage, right? Love it. So what, you know, the seven levels of communication for those of you who have not read the book or aren't familiar, uh, I'm not going to go through these, right? You can read the book and it, it, it's seven levels. And, and I, I know that sounds offish, but the thing is, 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 you know, you've got email and texting, you've got video, you've got handwritten notes, you've got phone calls and video calls like a FaceTime. Uh, you've got events and seminars and you got one-on-one -on -one meetings, right? And this top level is the influential zone. And there is no more influential place than in front of an audience at an event. There's no more influential place, right? So what we want to do is make sure that we're working in the influential zone as much as possible. But I want everybody to know that these direct mail, the email, and the handwritten notes, which are in the informational zone, can really, really support the influential zone in a big way. These levels down here allow you to be somewhere uh, when you're not there physically, right? A handwritten note, they get it when you're not there. Email, they get it when you're not there. A direct mail piece, they get it when you're not there. Advertising, they get when you're not there, right? So it allows you to be in more than one place at the same time. So that's the power of these here, right? Now, what I'm about to share with you is referral fusion. How do we use all of the levels of 7L to generate the most amount of referrals, right? And yeah. So, so what if I just told you, it, like in the next 10 minutes or five minutes, I'm going to tell you the best single best piece of direct mail you could ever send, right? Direct mail used to be humongous and why is it dropped off? And what if I could tell you the only piece of direct mail you could ever send? 
right? And then what about the best thing you could write in a handwritten note? Or the single best thing you could ever email to your database? Or the best video that you could ever do for your database? And okay. hint, hint, it's not a market report. Um, the, <laughs> absolute, the absolute best text message you could ever send. Absolute best, number one best text. It's not a holiday greeting. It, okay. Those are great, but this I'm gonna tell you what the best one is. And then the single best thing you could ever mention at a one-on-one, -on -one, and the number one single best reason to ever contact your data. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share all of those with you, right? Okay. And what if I told you it was all the same thing? Invitation. The number one best direct mail piece is an invitation to an event. The number one best email you could ever send is an invitation. The number one best Facebook message you could ever send is an invitation to an event. The number one Facebook post that you could ever post is an invitation to an event. The number one single phone call you can make is an invitation to an event. The number one single text message you could send is a invitation to an event. So, so why, why is that? Why do you, th and I have to tell you how this came about. My catalyst, we have over 500 catalysts now, and I have to thank lab coat because we've added about 20 from lab coat, you know, directly yes. from Rand. Yeah. Random acts of, of coaching. These not so random acts of, of coaching. And so it's one of those where they, they said, Hey, listen, Michael, can you just come up with the reasons to call your database? Right. The re so I started making a list like so they could put it up in their office in a poster. You know, we, we try to we aim to please. Right. We, it's demand driven. And it's like I started making this list. Right. The birthdays and the anniversaries and the house anniversary and the wedding anniversary and, the you know, all these different things. And, and it was just like the more I wrote and the more I focused on this, I just discovered that the number one reason to contact your database is an invitation to an event period that makes a little sense man yeah so why why do you guys think that is i right? think it, what, makes, it makes you feel special that's why that's exactly right so so you, when you are invited to something well let me let me flip that right not that it's ever happened to you guys because you're both good looking sexy and popular <laughs> but <laughs> but what if you found out that you were not invited to an event i'd feel kind of bummed i mean like why doesn't michael like me yeah. exactly right exactly not so not, not sexy enough yeah no, yeah I it's like totally feel that. sexy people only right <laughs> so this you know it, it's one of those where here's what's powerful about an invite is even when um even when someone's invited and they'll never go they feel special but what's funny is if they'd never go but they're not invited they hate you right so, so it's one of those where it's like, it, even if you can, there will be people from your database and trust me, I've done this for 20 years, who you will invite for 20 years times three events. That's 60 of never attend, but they love you and they will refer you. They'll, they'll, you'll invite them every time. Mm -hmm. They want to be invited, okay. but they won't attend, right? So yep. just, just know that that's, that's the case, right? In fact, I do believe that the best person in your database is a referring non-attendee because they don't cost you any money and they're referring you business. And by the way, the reason they're referring you is because of the invite. And then the other thing that's nice about it is that it's not a sales kind of approach, right? Never. They don't feel like they're that's being right. Sold, yeah. Is, and then it also creates the opportunity to follow up and not necessarily ask for a sale, but mm. ask for their participation or, or their, just say, thank you and get their advice, right? I love it. Kevin, you're oh, so in tune with this. That's TA, good. what? A uh, question here. When you're, when you're inviting people, how many show up? So I just know, because we're about to have this Halloween one and we're kind of, kind of, we're going to make it a big deal. So yeah. I want to know if I invite a thousand people, I'm going to end up with 200, a hundred. Here's the first thing is, is, well, what if you invited a thousand and had zero sign up or zero come, right? And that's okay. That's the first thing I want people to know. Oh, it, okay. the, yeah, it's okay. The, okay. the second thing is that um, that's why you want to have an RSVP system, right? You have to have an RSVP. And then if your event's on a Saturday, you're going to RSVP Friday and you're going to RSVP Saturday morning. Or I'm sorry, yeah, you're going to confirm the RSVP, right? So you're going to confirm on Friday, confirm on Saturday, and they will show up on Saturday, right? So you, you want to do RSVPs. And about 80, 
60 to 80 percent of the RSVPs will show up. Um, 80 percent will show up if you confirm on Friday and Saturday for a Saturday, or if the event's on Thursday, confirm on Wednesday and Thursday, right? So, yeah. When do you start your RSVP? At the very beginning? Yes. I'm going to actually explain exactly that here in like oh, two slides. Okay. How's that? No, that, uh, no, I want, I want you this engaged. I want you. And what's great for you, Tristan, is you're about to do this. So you're never in a higher learning mode than right now. Right. Yeah, dude, I'm just so, like, yeah, give yeah. it to me. Sucking it up. That's exactly a sponge. Yeah. Kevin. Um, I want to ask you, do you ever, so one of the things that we've done, I want to get your thoughts on this is uh, we use like something like MailChimp or something that allows us to, when we send out that email invite, we can yeah. see the open rate. Yeah. So like if somebody, although they may not have RSVP'd, they may have opened my email invitation like 20 times. Yeah. So that, what, that creates an opportunity for us to pick up the phone and follow up and call them and say, Hey, you know, we, we, we've invited you, we'd love for you to come and so on and so forth. So that's something that we've done. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just want to throw Is it out. working for you? Yeah. I mean, it just gives us keep doing idea. it. Keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. Right. So if it's working for you, keep doing it. I think that's the beauty of the seven L system, right? Is I, I give the structure or the timeline or the, or even maybe the plan. Right. Yeah. But, but what you do, what event you do is up to you right? What you want to do for your event, fine. But you know what? You need to follow this formula because what we've discovered is this formula maximizes referrals, right? Yep. Yep. So, so what I want to do right now is I, I, I'm going to, I may overwhelm some people and some people will just, this may be super basic, but, but I want to give a helicopter in, in a couple of slides, I'm going to give a helicopter approach to what we teach, right? Which mm -hmm. is there's two, right? The all yap. And who is that for? The all, the, yap. the all yap, I thought you said was for everybody, like lead, online leads, everybody. Everybody. Every, from, the, from your top people all the way to people you've never met but have connected with you in some way, like an internet lead, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. so here's the thing, right? The number one biggest mistake that I see is that people have zero appreciation events. That's the number one biggest mistake I see. And I see agents – and I don't care if you are an agent doing 12 transactions a year, you should have an appreciation party of some sort. Now, the second biggest mistake I see, and I see this from top producers who are doing 500, 600 transactions, right? Is they yep. do one yearly appreciation event a year. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm actually gonna share with you the exact formula, the exact number of events that you should do in a year Either you do one transaction and you're brand new, or you do 1,500 transactions like our client Mark Spain, right? So this is the this is the formula, right? So it looks Dude. like that, right? Doesn't that look cool? That's a squiggly line. Is What's that the gorgeous? Or, so, okay. So here's the pattern: January and February, you're going to invite them to your March event. Right, and I noticed the formatting tweet, tweaked a little bit when we went Zoom, but that's a, the why is cut off. Not that I handle all details or notice all of that stuff, but I do. So March event, right? And then notice we have a little kick here, and and then April we're going to follow up, okay. right? So so that is the formula for success. But doing one of those, what ends up happening is no follow up happens, uh, and 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 you lose what I'm about to share with you next, which is. All right, May, June, you're going to invite, invite to the July event, right? Which is the barbecue, something with ice cream, right? The, cre the, the, the key with March and April is trees or nature, right? Trees or nature, flowers, right? So we, have, we, do a, uh, we, ha we do an Earth Day birthday on my wife's birthday, which is April 22nd, and they come by and they pick up saplings. Every single person gets a sapling, and if their kids are coming – their kids get trees too. They go back, funny story, Shannon Julian just listed a property a couple of weeks ago. She's, she's my partner in Kansas City who runs the Kansas City home team. And she went and the, the, the gal who she listed their house pointed at a tree that was about 20 feet tall in their yard. And she said that she had gotten that from our Earth Day event 15 years ago. What? Right? What? So That's so. Cool. So we do, Arbor Day is also in early April. So you can do something around Arbor Day and it works too. But, but July, the secret to summer events 
ice cream. That's what we've discovered. You've never heard that before because I've never shared it publicly before. But, and then August is follow up. And then you're going to go right into September invitation, October invitation. And then you get into your Halloween parties and your, and your pie days, right? We had 310 catalysts do pie days last year. We almost shut down Costco's pumpkin pie service. Whoa. And, yeah. So, so uh, big, big event all across the country. It was so beautiful to see. Um, wait, wait, and then, wait, wait. And then the simmers follow up. Yeah. So you buy the pumpkin pies from Costco? Ahead Not me of personally. I mean, but you know, your, your crew does? Yes. Yeah, we and go to Costco. Like, do you tell them ahead of time, hey, guys, we're going to need uh, 300 pies for yes. tomorrow? Yes. And if you buy a certain amount of pies, it's different in different locations. They will actually put your logoed label on top of all those pies. Ooh, no way. Yeah. Costco? So, yeah. Huh? Who does that? Costco. Okay, so I have a question. Hey, look. Yeah, they're they're hating me right now, right? I mean, right <laughs> wow. now, they're they're when I just said that, they're hating. Here's the thing: you don't have to get it from Costco. You can get it from a local bakery. We have a lot of people who have local bakeries that are that are famous or whatever. It's like, hey, use them. Well, if um, you have a, if you have a client that has a local bakery, perfect, yeah. right? Yeah, even better, so, even better. I love keeping yeah. it in house, right? Yeah. So so here's the thing about the three event system versus a one event system or the worst yet, a zero event system right. is, is you get energy, you get momentum and you get referrals. Like the first one, you might get zero to six referrals. And, and that's, what, that's what's so funny is people spend 25 grand on an appreciation event at the end of the year and they won't get any referrals. And they're like, yeah, I had it and it was all good and I, I appreciated people, but I, I didn't get any referrals from it, right? And well, it's, yeah, it's because you had one event. There's no momentum. Well, so you, this one you'll get 20. This one you'll get 30 to 50 referrals at one event. So uh, Brandon Nelson, he was just interviewed by Michael Hellickson. He's a coaching client of ours. And he, he got 50, 39 referrals and 10 me's at his last event. So 39 referrals, 10 me's. Mm -hmm. Me's are, I'm interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate. So fit, almost 50 pieces of business from his last event. And it, it was his third event of the year. Huh? Yeah. Right? Wow. Momentum. Like, energy. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. This, is, this is a lot of great information, right? So I think yeah. you, you may go into it, but like if I'm an, if I'm an agent, I'm watching this and I'm like, man, this is great. But first of all, how much is it, how much are you putting in, in terms of cost, right? Yeah, you're, you're making money every event you throw. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. That's awesome. And then second <laughs> is where do you do these events? Like where should I do them? And your uh, office. Okay. And then what about who's helping you coordinate this stuff? Cause uh, well, okay. So it's yeah. overwhelming when you look at the 30,000 foot view or the 10,000 foot view, right? But realize yeah. you're only doing one event. You're doing three events a year. So yes, if you had to coordinate three events at the same time, it would be really tough. But when you look at three events a year and you break it down to a weekly activity, which is what is on the screen right now, this is the 52 week client appreciation plan, right? So this is the all gap plan, right? When you break it down to weekly, you you will literally have weeks when you don't do anything, like at all. Screenshot. But but notice like week six, right? The spring event starts planning, starts in week four. But week six is like sponsor calls. So all you're doing that week is you're going to line up sponsors who want to help support your event. Don't limit it to the real estate standards. You're You're going to also think about restaurants, you're going to think about contractors, you're going to th think about mobile phone, you're going to think about all the mom and pop shops. Listen, they'll give $50 or $100 to be involved with your party. So I think the biggest thing is, is but, but you know what? I'm asking you for this event for one week, just call on people who you've done business with and get them involved with your event. And please notice that you are literally 11 weeks before the event. You're way ahead of schedule. You're way ahead. You know, so, so the, you, you know, you do your email video invite, your email invite, your RSVP calls, your handwritten notes to your top people. Look at this. Week 12 is a great week. The handwritten notes are actually received by your top people. You literally don't have to do anything that week.
but but I, I changed this plan about five years ago because you really are doing something in week 12. What's happening, A, you're doing a top yap event, but number two is on your all yap, you are getting RSVPs from the handwritten notes. So if you wrote 25 handwritten notes, you have 20 people calling and saying, hey, you know, I'm going, I'm in for the event, right? Yep. So, so you actually are, you are doing some stuff with your event and with your, your but, but how cool is it that they're calling you to RSVP for your event, right? That's the best part. Yeah, I agree. So there's a 52 week plan. I don't want to necessarily dive into the details, but just know that when you have a 52 week plan and you have 52 weeks to do something, it's amazing how little you have to do on a weekly basis to, to be successful. Right. So what do you mean in terms of average number of attendees at, at these events, if they're following these. I'll tell you, it depends, it depends on the event. So with the all yap, you can invite a thousand people and have 20 to 25 show up. Right. So, but, but what happens is your influence grows, which is what this is all about, is how do you grow your influence so more people will use your services? Well, with the all yap, you, you, you want it to be nice, but you don't want it to be too nice, right? So, so that's the key with the, the trees, right? The, the, the saplings is, is some people will drive an hour for those. Some people wouldn't drive one minute for those right? And it's okay. It's okay, right? So, so, but, but the key here is not the event. It's the invite. So, I, I, I just, we really need to, to hone in on that. And our Earth Day birthdays for a long time, listen to this, my first year, I invited about 250 people to pick up a sapling, and I had five people come and pick them up. Five. Now, you might think, well, that's embarrassing, and I go, not at all, because here's the thing. I got 10. It cost me $65 to have that event, 65, right? So, so I had it at my office. We had the trees. We had 10 trees in there. And mm -hmm. I remember Jeff Holman, a good friend of mine, showed up the tr at the event, and, and he, he said, oh, my gosh, good thing we got here when we did. There's only seven trees left. <laughs> and I go, yes, I am so glad you showed up when you did. Here's two trees, <laughs> right? So I gave him two trees and said, hey, plant one with your son, right? So, but, but it, it's just like when you have this come and get it, when you have these come to the office and get it events, is you're not as locked in. Well, first of all, the venue's free. Second of all, is they're coming to you, which is the traction versus chasing. And, and number three is that, listen, it, it's just an excuse for you to interact with people, right? And, and you're also doing a lot of good for, the, for, the, for nature and for the world, right? So, yeah. so that's the all yap, which I believe should be events where you invite them to come to the office where everybody gets something, right? Got it? Yep, 100%, dude. Okay, all right. Now, the top yaps, special people, right? These are your ambassadors. These are the people who changed my life, right? So this is the top yap. And, and so now with the top yap, please notice that there's four humps here, is you're going to have four events that are top yaps. But, but hang tough. You're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, I got to do seven events now? Uh, the answer is, is no, okay? So, so what we're going to do here is, is follow the same system, right? Invite, confirm, have your event, follow up. Invite, mm -hmm. confirm, event, follow up. Invite, confirm, have your event, follow up, right? And then week 48 is a great week to have an event that's, you know, towards the end of November. And then you follow up in the best month in the world to follow up, which is December for most people. So, when so you up, Michael, what are you saying? I'm going to, I'm going to, I have a slide exactly for that. And I'm going to cover it. It, it. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. And I've got a formula for each person, right? Okay. So, so once again, what you do with this is you're going to drive energy, momentum, and referrals. The thing that I want people to really note here is this, is this can be the same event repeated four times, and you, each event has different attendees. So the event doesn't change, the planning doesn't change, the people change. So let's say you have 100 people that you know really well right? Or their ambassadors, A plus, A, your top people. You can, we can all have a top hundred, right? No matter 
we may not like the hundred, but we have a top hundred, right? Yep. It, so, so you're going to invite 25 to this, a different 25 to this, a different 25 to this, and a different 25 to this. So you will have touched in a very powerful way your top hundred throughout the year without being overwhelming, right? Now, if it's me, I'm going to choose my top 25 for that first event, right? The very top. Now, people ask me all the time. I get, I've gotten a billion questions on this system, as you can imagine. But it's like, what if you have somebody that's really, really awesome at the first event? Can you invite him to the second event? Well, it's your business. I mean, the answer to that's yes, right? 100%. Yeah. So you could have somebody that goes to all four of these events, right? You could. But, but the key is you're going to invite different people to all four events, okay? Got it. And your inner circle deserves more. So uh, once again, we have a 52-week system for that, which is broken down week by week so that you know exactly what to do that week to maximize your referrals, okay? All right, to Kevin's question. The fortune truly is in the follow-up. There's three groups of people. There's people who attend and give you referrals, okay? So mm -hmm. those are a special breed of people. You are, the follow-up for that is the same for all referrals for us, but I always remind people that, you get a lot at, at events, so you need to make sure you're, you're diligent with this. So mm -hmm. you're gonna call the referral source first. So let's say Tristan goes to my event and refers me Kevin. I'm gonna call Tristan first and say, hey, listen, you had mentioned Kevin. What do you know about Kevin? How do you think I can help Kevin the most? And Tristan's gonna tell me, right? Then I'm gonna call Kevin, right? I'm gonna call the referral. I call Kevin and I say, hey, listen, uh, Tristan had recommended that we call you. He thought we might be able to help you. So, you know, how can we help you? Can we help you? Yeah. Right. And, and Kevin says, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm thinking about buying. I, I, I've got a couple of things I need to take care of, but you know, we're looking in six months, right? Uh, fantastic. Here's the deal. What are a couple of those things that we, you know, you need help taking care of, right? So if it's this or this, we've got somebody that can help them, right? Mm -hmm. So we start helping immediately and we put them into the six months, three to six month category in our database and we're off and rolling, right? Then here is the difference maker. This is, this is so important and so easy and so powerful. I'm then gonna call Tristan back. And I'm gonna say, hey, Tristan, I just got off the phone with Kevin. We had a great conversation. You hit it on the head. They needed our help. We're gonna help them. I, I appreciate that very much. I just wanted to call and just say, hey, you know what? I really appreciate you connecting uh, me to Kevin. And uh, I, I appreciate that much, very much, right? It is uncanny how often on that call, once we've helped somebody diligently that they know, how often they know someone else for us to help. That's true. You know what? I'm so glad you called. You know what? I, I didn't put my sister on the thing because I think she may be a little credit challenged, right? But, but I know she wants to buy a house eventually. So, you know, is that somebody you want to know about now? And it's like, uh, yes, that would be somebody I want to know about now right? How's the best way to follow up with her? I call the sister and then I text message Tristan and say, Hey, I talked to your sister. It went great. She rocks. We're going to make it happen. Right now. Number two are attendees who don't refer you. You're going to call them and say, thank you. Thank you so much for attending the event. Did you have a good time? How'd we do? Right? Oh, it was awesome. I got the tree. You know what? We've already planted it, you know, whatever it may be. And then, and then, um, you know what? We love having these events for people you know, what should we do in the future? What kind of events should we do in the future? What kind of events do you typically attend anyway, right? You know, what are your kids into? Baseball, softball, you know, football, swimming, you know, whatever, maybe, you know, what, what kind of, and, and then we get their advice, right? We get their advice on, on what we should do differently and what kind of events we should do in the future, right? Which if you've read Presuasion by, by mm -hmm. Dr. Cialdini, you know the power of asking for advice, right? When they give you their advice, they're giving you their ownership and they're buying in to your success and to future events. Please notice that if they attend this event, we do this call, they will attend our next event. Now, I truly believe the best people in the world are non-attendees. They don't cost you anything. The follow-up is very easy and they still refer you. So we call and we say, hey, we missed you, right? We missed you. Now, here's the thing. Do you mind if we include you in future events? <laughs> Right. That's so brilliant, dude. Yeah, You're making thanks. him feel guilty. Like, hey, hey, you know what? Sorry you couldn't make it. Do you even want to come to our next events? But it does make <laughs> you feel important, right? 
But still, right? you're gonna, you're, you're, if you called me like that, I'd be like, oh, damn it. Yeah, I didn't go. I'm I so forgot. Sorry. The number one thing I get is I forgot, right? I forgot or I couldn't make it or I was out of town or whatever, but it's okay. But, but the big thing is, is I, I want permission to communicate in the future, right? Which is mind if we include you in future events, right? And 99% Tristan and Kevin, they're going to say yes, but you will get, and I had probably a hundred of these over 15 years. You'll get the one where they say, you know what, Michael, I really appreciate what you're doing and I love what you're doing. But I have an aunt who's a real estate agent and she helped us buy this house. We'll probably sell through her. We'll probably buy our, our next house through her. And I, I just want you to know that, listen, you know, you can take us off because, you know, we're, we're probably not going to be a client of yours. Right. And, and, and so I can tell you some ninja stuff strategy on that conversation, but, but at the very lowest, just say, okay. Right. Just say, you know what? It's Okay that kind of thing. And, and just, and then just take it. But I will tell you that ninja strategy, like 501 is I'm going to say, uh, what's your aunt's name? Her name's Linda. And then I will snap the brake line on her car so that, no, I'm kidding. So I will say, I will say, I mean, not that it was wait, me. Wait, yeah. <laughs> I said it was ninja, dude. I said it was ninja. Ninjas have swords. What do you do with swords? You don't just look at them. Right, you use them to cut brake lines of people that are competitors. This is strategy five hundred one, <laughs> Michael Mayer. I yeah, so it. so I only say that because she had a sob five hundred one. But I'm just kidding. Oh, but here's the so thing, funny. right? Is what I'm gonna say is okay. I I love that you uh, would use Linda and that, that you're gonna. You know, I love loyalty. But let me ask you this: If you had a referral, somebody that wasn't you that was looking to buy an Overland Park, who would you, who would you refer that to? Would you refer that to Linda? Because she works Shawnee. I know she works Shawnee. But, but if it was Overland Park, would you be willing to refer that out? Got it. Okay. And if so, then you know what? We'd love to be that one. We know we're not going to get your Shawnee business. We're not going to get your Linda business. But we'd love to have your central Kansas City, right? If somebody wants to leave Summit or they want Overland Park, then we'll take that, right? That's the area that we that we really do a lot of business in. So how's that sound, Todd, right? And Todd well, goes, you know what? I can do that. So here's the thing, Todd. Just know we have agreement on our relationship. The expectations are set. We'd love for you to come to the next event. Smart. Dude, I'm loving it, bro. We've got five minutes. Here we go. All right. Best things in life are strategic alliances, right? So that's how we get them for free, and that's how we make money on these events Is is we have – strategic, we, we go for sponsors. All of our events are sponsored. I'll just put it that way, right? Perfect. So don't have an event without a sponsor, right? If your event, if you can't sell your event to a sponsor, you'll never be able to sell it to your database. Can you give us a good script? Give me your realtor you card. About an event? I'm sorry? Can you give us a script? What do you tell your sponsors? You pick up the phone, you call, what do you yeah. say? How do you say yeah, hey, listen, I'm looking to grow my business. One of the ways is through events, and we also want to help you grow your business. So if, if we could get you in front of 20, 25, maybe even 50 consumers who are looking for services like yours, would that be good for you and your business? Got it. Yes? Yes. Thank okay. goodness. So here's the thing. The event's going to cost about $500, right? How about we split it? Would you be able to do 250 Yeah, I can do that. Okay, fantastic. So we'll, we'll get you signed in for 250. We'll put your logo on the invite on a card that goes at the event and then also on the thank you. So those are physical things that go to them and they have to notice them because we send them in a color envelope. So your logo will be on all that. And then at Evite, we have everybody RSVPs through the Evite. Your logo will also be prominently disp displayed at the bottom of the Evite. And then uh, here's the other thing. So also, every sponsor that we have is required to bring a door prize. Now, uh, have you Ooh. given door have you given door prizes in the future, Kevin? No, I've never done that. I've never done that. Okay, so here's the thing. It's as easy as uh, a $50 gift certificate, like a Visa card. But I don't want you to give me a $50 card. I want you to give me five $10 gift cards, okay? And those are going to be the door prizes. Now, so here's how the door prizes work at the event. So at the end of the event, we're going to do door prizes and we're going to bring you up, right? And now if this is a come to the office and they leave event, we're going to do all of this on video. 
if it's a movie theater or something like that where everybody's there, then we will do this in front of all the people. I'm going to bring you up. We're going to do the door prize. And before we do the door prize, I'm going to introduce you and I'm going to endorse you in front of all my friends, all my clients, and everybody I know. And I'm going to brag about how great you are, right? And then we're going to do the door prize. And because you're giving away these great door prizes, they love you. And, um, and, and that's essentially what you're going to get for that $250. How's that Let me sound? Let ask you a question. That sounds good. And I have a question for you, Michael. Do I have access to the list? No. Here's why. Is you have access to me and I have access to the list. So bottom line is my access to the list of my friends and family. I mean, here's the thing. Would you share your friends and family and your uh, wedding guest list and your Christmas card list with right. me? Right. Right. Maybe, maybe not. Right. But here's the thing. I'm not even going to ask you for it. Right. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask you for it, but here's the thing. And, and I want you to know, Kevin, it's not because of you. I trust you. I love you. You're a great sponsor. But, but what I want to know, want you to know is that somebody ruined that for you a long time ago is, is we did share the list and somebody chose to market that to that list instead of communicate with them. And we got, we, it was inconsistent with our brand and our values. So people were really turned off. And in fact, that lender is no longer doing loans. Wow. Oh, wow. So, so it was a very bad thing. So we actually, we kind of protect people from themselves, but I want you to know if you ever have something that you want to say to my people, let me know and I'll say it to them, which is even more powerful for you. Would you agree? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Awesome. That's Glad to have good. you on board for this event. It's going to be great. Then I'm going to call the next sponsor. Let's call it Jane. And I'm going to say, Hey, listen, we have this event. It's going to be big. We want to grow our business. We found we grow our business real big with, with consumers and clients uh, at these events. And we want to help you grow yours. Um, the event's about $500. Would you be willing to 200, be, do $250? Yeah. Right. They say yes. And then we go to the next one and we say, Hey, listen, the event's about 500. Uh, would you be willing to do 250? And they say yes. And then you go to the next one and say, Hey, listen, um, this is about $500. Would you be willing to do half 250 for this event? And they so say yes. Money. You're making money. Oh my God. Would that be crazy? Would it be crazy to make money making money? Because if that's the law, I'm in, right? I want to make money. That's yeah. Great. Yeah, I'm, that's the one difference between our system and everybody else's system is we teach people how to make money, making money. Dude. So you make money on the events and then you make money on the referrals. But here's the thing, you're making money, but you're having the time of your life. You're loving it, they're loving it, and everybody else is loving it, right? So, Love it. but here's the thing, if they have a sponsor, make sure they all contribute a door prize. That's, that's a requirement. All right. So start with sponsors. All Love right. It. So Thank we have a bunch of events. I'm, I'm going to fly through. Blah, blah, blah. It's awesome. It's great. It's the greatest thing ever. You should probably sign up for Catalyst today. It's awesome. <laughs> to check us out. Okay. So in summary, the number one reason to contact your database is? To invite them to an event. An invitation to an event. You ding, ding, ding. You win. Okay. Don't have an event without a? Sponsor. Sponsor. Winner, winner. Oh, you yeah, win. Kevin Marquette. It's tied one to one, baby. Oh, All dude. right, every sponsor provides a door prize. Door prize. Kevin Marquette is in oh, the house. He hit the button early. Damn, door Kevin. Prize. All right, don't have an event without partnering with a vendor. Not quite. Oh, damn it, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin well, for the steal. Um, I don't know. I'm done. I'm Tristan. Lying. All right, Tristan, here's a hint. I, a, I run an organization called the Generosity Generation. Oh, got it. Charitable organization? Boom, nonprofit or charity. Make sure you are partnering with a nonprofit or a charity. It can be any nonprofit or charity. Take blank and get blank. Um, take Stumper. This is a stumper question for a tiebreaker. Notice it was number five. All right. Take, take photos, get videos. Make uh, sure you take lots oh, and yeah. lots of photos. That's actually really good. Get a lot of it. Have a testimonial place, right? Have somebody that's in charge of video testimonials at the event. And then the blank is in the blank. The proof is in the follow-up. Boom! Kevin's in the house! Yes. Damn, Kevin. <laughs> All right. You so, cheated, bro. <laughs> uh, he cheated. <laughs> he cheated by knowing the answers. That's awesome. <laughs> So, I mean, I think that's the big thing is I just, I, to, to really, Tristan, make max out your event. Make sure you've got a, a nonprofit or charity involved. Go for sponsors right now. Um, take, take photos, get lots of videos. And remember the fortunes and the follow-up. You're going to call the ones that refer you 
and express your appreciation and follow that referral source, referral, referral source, uh, follow-up plan. The non-attendees, make sure you're saying, hey, we missed you. Do you mind if we uh, include you in future events? And then with the people who attended, just say, man, thanks so much for attending. It was great to hug you. Or if I only got to see you for a couple minutes, it was great to fist, buck, uh, fist bump you. And it's all good. And I hope you can come to the future events. In fact, you know, how could we change this event to make it even better in the future? And I will tell you that every event is better because, because our consumers, because our clients have great ideas on how to make it better. Dude, you're getting so many, uh, uh, so many comments saying this is awesome, this is great, this is great, this is awesome. Uh, events are gold and they're fun. Slam dunk, I love this. Yeah, somebody's fangirling. They love you. Um, lots of thumbs up. This is great. This is, dude. You blew this out of the park. Well, I, I appreciate it. it. Was definitely an abbreviated thing. And and, and here's the thing. I did not invent the house ring party, right? People did house ring parties before I did them, but I did invent it from the avenue of a business throwing a house ring party for a client. And I invented how to maximize referrals from that. I did not invent parties. I did not invent events, right? But what I did do is I have created a system to maximize referrals from events and parties, right? That's what you if, do. You look at, if you look at any of these companies, like Buffini, right? Buffini, he, what he did is he goes to an event, he speaks, and he sells coaching, right? That is, that is I mean, you know, you look at a lot of these coaching companies, Craig Proctor, you look at um, uh, all of this, right? You look at KW. How did Keller Williams grow to be such a business? They had training, and they had seminar events, and they invited recruits, and some of the recruits were like, well, my place doesn't do training like this, so I need to learn more, right? So KW was grown with the 7L system. Most coaching companies have been grown through marketing and the 7L system in combination. So, so it's one of those where um, it's, 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 it's almost powerful beyond measure because even those that don't refer you or use your services mm -hmm. love you. So That's there is great. so much good reputation and brand awareness in the marketplace. And, and they're like, hey, if, if, they, if they, even if they've never attended, but you've invited them, they think you're a good person. They think you're a good guy or good gal. And when somebody they know uses you, they go, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. Instead of saying, I hate realtors, right? Yeah, that's so man, true. I, I learned a lot. That was, this is a really good call. Yeah, man, I must have taken a picture of every single slide that you put up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why the formatting changed with Zoom. Like the sponsor R has fallen off. And I noticed uh, on, on the plan. Because Zoom shrinks it a little is bit. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, so. I'll plan for that in the future, maybe. Uh, well, so, maybe. Well, yeah, thanks, maybe. Michael. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. You always bring your A game, man. So My pleasure. You guys everybody rock. Everybody appreciates this. Michael, where do we find you if somebody wants to do this? Uh, Jen, Jen? I've always wanted to say this, right? Just Google me, right? I've always wanted to say it. So, <laughs> hey, listen, everything's at referco.com, R-E-F-E-R-C-O.com. We are the world's foremost authority on business referrals. We don't just help real estate agents. We help lenders, small business owners, all the way up to Fortune 500 companies uh, get more referrals. And I take what I've learned from the Fortune 500 companies and, and these larger companies, and I take that and apply when I help with, uh, with realtors and lenders and those in the real estate industry. So I love what I do, man. Let's, let's, let's do it together. Come play with me. Let's, let's rock it, right? Let's, let's win the referral game together. And, that, and that's what I really do, right? Awesome. Love it, man. Thank right. you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. Take care. Thanks.